uh, doing the teaching and what the Lord put in my heart was about aggressive faith. You know, this is a time that every believer needs to believe the Lord and trust the Lord. And faith is built on trust. It, it grows when the more we trust the Lord with everything that's in our lives, uh, spirit, soul, mind, body, our families, our finances, our jobs, uh, whatever we trust the Lord with, the more and more we trust him, the more our faith will multiply. And so, you know, the enemy tries to come and bring things that will uh, hurt our, our faith. And, and he, he wants to grab hold of that faith because everything we receive from the Heavenly Father is through that vehicle of faith. And so if he can stop our faith, then he can stop what is coming to us from the kingdom of God. And so tonight we want to um, just look into the scriptures and think about the boldness of the Lord, because the righteous are as bold as lions. And this is the year of the lion, hallelujah, where God's voice, he is roaring uh, in the earth today. He's changing things. He's shaking up things. And he's making things new and fresh. Hallelujah. And so let's just lay a little bit of foundation here uh, before we go into the main points of this message tonight. And it says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, we're all familiar with this scripture. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means that if you can see it, you do not have to have faith to receive it. But those things that are out in the, in the heavenly realm, in the supernatural realm, and healing is one of those things, uh, abundance and prosperity is another one, uh, soundness of mind is another area and all of that comes about when we believe the Lord and believe what he says in his word now mm -hmm. faith is the substance it's something that we can take hold of and and stand on hallelujah we can stand on his word and we'll we'll talk about standing in a little bit and then in Mark 11, 22 through 24, this is some of our favorite scriptures that we were weaned on, if you will. We, we studied these scriptures. We listened to them over and over again. We grew up on, we grew up on these scriptures. And, um, and so it's Mark 11, 22 through 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Trust in the Lord. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says unto this mountain, be removed and be ye cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Hallelujah. And so our words are very, very important in producing abundance and prosperity, healing, deliverance in our lives. Amen. In our lives. Amen. So it says, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he says. Now, you know, this, this right here, we have to believe when we speak it out of our mouth that it's already accomplished. It's already done. You see, God's word has already been proven. Hallelujah. His word is a sure word of prophecy. That means that it's already accomplished. 
God spoke it. God created the, the world with his words. And it was. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God said, let there be healing in your body. There's healing in our bodies. I receive that. Amen. I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the Jerry, name of Jesus. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they they put a lot of stock on what the doctor says. Right. They put more stock. And then by that, I mean they value more highly what the doctor says or what their bank account says than what God says in his word. Amen. And that's where you get that double-mindedness where sometimes you're speaking faith and sometimes you're speaking doubt and, and unbelief. unbelief have doubt and unbelief in your heart. And uh, one of these th uh, verses that you're reading there says we can't have any doubt in our heart. Oh, that's what so, it says. Uh, we've got to be, we've got to be thinking one way. And that is what the word of God Amen. says by the spirit of God. Amen. That's the way that we have to think. And that's what we have to have in our heart. So it, it's not, uh, and what we see a lot of times are people when they're around us, they, they speak faith. But when they're not around us, they speak doctor and doctor's reports. That's a double-minded person. Amen. I want to share uh, with you just, just briefly here, because you've, you've heard my testimony, that I would not be sitting here tonight declaring the word of God if I had believed the three doctors that said I was going to die in six months. If I had believed their report, I would not be here tonight praising the Lord and declaring his word. I give him praise tonight. I give him all the glory for being my healer. Hallelujah. And then verse 24 says, therefore I say, what, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. I receive, I ask for healing. I receive healing. I ask for uh, abundance, I receive abundance. I ask for a new job, I receive a new job. By faith. I'm talking about aggressive faith tonight. Not just faith, but aggressive faith. Now, aggressive, and, and you know that I'm militant. Hallelujah. I, I, I teach warfare. I teach... Um, going into battle i teach overcoming of the enemy uh by the word of god and by the blood of god by the blood of jesus and the word of my testimony and i love not my life unto the death that's how we overcome you know that i teach all of that but tonight i want you to see that this is an aggressive faith this is not something that you just say one time and you think that everything's uh going to be okay Therefore, I say, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Hallelujah. Lord, we want aggressive faith. Don't we want aggressive faith? Romans 4, 20 and 21. This is Abraham. Abraham did not waver. Now, Brother Fred was talking about waver, um, being unsettled in our minds. One day we're speaking faith and the next day we're speaking doubt and unbelief or what the world is saying, what the doctors are saying, what the economy is saying, uh, what the news is saying. Um, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. He was, he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced now, that's aggressive right there, being fully convinced that what God had promised him, he was able to give it to him. He was able to perform it. Hallelujah. You know, when it says in 1 Peter 2.24 that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. That's it. That's the word. You believe it in your heart. You don't doubt. You don't speak otherwise. You just keep speaking that. Hallelujah. And the scripture I kept speaking over and over again every single day. Psalms 118 verse 17 that says, I shall not die, but live 
and declare the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are healed. Praise the name of Jesus. They, they, the, Jesus took the cancer. The doctors did not find it. They cut me from one side to the other. But they did not find any cancer. Hallelujah. And I and I thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Because he is able to perform his word. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Also, there's a scripture that's coming up real strong in me right now. And that is, and, and I'll just speak it out uh, to you tonight. And that is, be not afraid of sudden fear. Hallelujah. Be not afraid of sudden fear. When you get a call from the doctor, like I did at four o'clock on December the 30th, 1992. Yes. That said, you have terminal cancer. We're going to operate. But if we can't get it all, it travels too fast. And we won't be able to do chemo. And we have you have six months to live. Now, that's what they told me at four o'clock on December 30th, 1992. Hallelujah. Well, here I am. Declaring the word tonight, and I will declare it until my last breath here on this earth because he gave me my life. But you see, it was in his word. It's all in his word. That's what aggressive faith is. Believing God's word and that he's able to perform it. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt everyone a measure of faith. Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. has given every person a measure of faith. Yeah. But you see, that measure can grow. It's like a mustard seed. And it can grow into a giant tree. Hallelujah. You see, the more you put your faith out there, and the more you believe the Lord and trust in the Lord and he performs his word, hallelujah. And then you give him thanks and you give him glory. Your faith will grow and it will grow and grow and grow until it's a giant tree. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That's what we want. That's aggressive faith right there. It's not going to lay. It's not going to stay a little mustard seed. If you will use it. Hallelujah. Now, if you want to believe what the world says, your faith is not going to grow. If you believe what doctors say, if they give you a bad report and you believe that, then your faith is not going to grow. Because God does not teach someone by giving them sickness or disease. God does not teach people to be better Christians by putting a disease on them. Are, are making them go through a trial. He doesn't do that. Do you know how he teaches? Through the Holy Spirit. That's how God teaches. He is, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Not only is he a, our comforter, but he is our teacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to the book of James. James 1, 3. I'm still laying a foundation here. James 1, 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. You see, when the enemy comes and he shakes your tree, whew, are you going to be able to stand? Are you going to be able to, with uh, when the, the wind comes, is your house built upon the rock? Oh, hallelujah. That's another message entirely. But I'm talking tonight about aggressive faith. Putting out your faith and standing on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sherry, let me give a couple of testimonies sure. here. And they, they relate. Uh, they're related to each other. And one was probably 25 uh, years ago. And uh, I had uh, a lot of pain in uh, my private parts. And uh, what I did, I could have immediately jumped up and run to the doctor. But what I did... I jumped up and ran away 
to a place uh, where I could fast and pray and seek the Lord. And and so we're talking mm -hmm. about aggressive. Well, uh, it's action. There, there's some Amen. action. There has to be action with that. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and I, I spent uh, days in fasting and praying. And uh, the Lord released me. I, I came back home. So I had gone off. I stayed in a in a place and I didn't eat. Uh, I drank water, but I sought the Lord uh, because I, I knew this could be a very difficult situation. But uh, in that process, I was healed. I was having, I was experiencing pain, and uh, the Lord healed me. And I uh, and so I went along for several years, and then I had some similar pains. I don't know if it was exactly the same because I didn't go to the doctor the first time uh, and I didn't go to the doctor the second time. The second time was just uh, uh, months ago and I had pain and it is in the similar area. And uh, this time I didn't even tell Sherry and I was uh, in pain uh, during the, the night I couldn't sleep. What I did, I just uh, listened to uh, YouTube uh, videos about healing and uh, teaching about faith. Yeah, uh, because I needed my faith to arise. Oh, hallelujah! And uh, so for four nights, I might have just dozed on and off, but I didn't sleep well. But I did listen to the word of God uh, to build up my faith. And again, I hadn't even told Sherry. And uh, on the fourth, uh, after the fourth night, on that next morning. Uh, there was a, demon, a demonic influence that left my body, and I have not had the problem since then, and I'm healed and totally delivered. Amen. Amen. And so I'm using this as a testimony. And then I'm showing you that God has healed me, and he's healed me multiple times of multiple things, but these two things uh, were pain in the same area, and uh, the first time, so it's a different approach. You have to be led by the Spirit of God. The first time I experienced this pain, uh, I went off and fasted and sought the Lord. I fasted for, uh, I don't know how many days, but a few days, and, and the, I was healed in that process. Uh, I didn't feel anything uh, spectacular, but I, it was a healing. I was just healed. And it might have been a gradual healing. I'm not for sure. But this, uh, that was like 25 years ago, a few months ago. I had a similar pain. I had the same pain, same area. And uh, But this time, I, I didn't go off. I didn't go off and fast. And I, I didn't do a lot of praying during the day. It was at night because that's when my pain was most severe. And I listened to YouTube with just on my phone. I'd put it in a Bluetooth and I'd listen quietly. And uh, Sherry would sleep, and I, because of the times when I couldn't sleep, I would listen to faith. Uh, so people talking about faith. And the person that I love to listen to is Kenneth Hagin. I listen to a lot of him and a lot of his teaching on healing. But I listen to other people as well during that time. But he was the, the prominent person. And, and on the fourth day, a, a demonic influence, a demonic force mm -hmm. left my body. So it was a, it was immediate and, and it was spectacular. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, that was the healing. And, and I, 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 re, I share this tonight to say, this is what God can do for you. He's no respecter of person. He uh, healed me. He will heal you. And he is the same yesterday, today, Amen. and forever. So he doesn't change. He is the healer. Amen. A and uh, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. Uh, how to go about uh, seeking the Lord and finding out how he wants to touch our bodies and touch our situation Amen. and solve our problems. And I'm sharing this tonight as a... Uh, uh, to release really the same power Hallelujah. that went into my body can go into your body. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jude 20 and 21, verses 20 and 21, it says, But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, listen to this, 
praying in the Holy Spirit. That's how it multiplies. This aggressive faith I'm talking about is going to multiply in you when you pray in your prayer language, when you pray in tongues. And if you can just keep on praying, keep on praying, keep on praying. And it says, keep yourself in the love of God. God is love. And so we want to stay in him. We want to abide in him. And he wants to abide in us. Hallelujah. Looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And that word mercy there is also compassion. You know, Jesus was moved with compassion and he healed the multitudes. He healed the multitudes. And so we want compassion to rise up in us. Even if it's if it's our own body that we're praying about, we want God's compassion to, to rise up in us you know, many times we talk about compassion for other people. But see, it's in within us. It's within us. And so when we release it into our, our spirit, our soul, our mind, our bodies, then it brings healing. It brings healing to us. Ephesians 3.12, and then I'm going to start with the, the three things I want to talk about tonight. Ephesians 3.12 says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Hallelujah. So we aggressively can come before the Lord. In fact, that's how he wants us to come. He wants us to come boldly to his throne. Not like a little wimp, not uh, someone who's who's crying and in a penny party and, oh, poor me, you know, I need this and I need that. No, he wants you to be aggressive. And for some of you, that's out of character. But I'm telling you, if you want the things from God, you come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. He's giving you access to him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have access to all that God has. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there's three things I want to share with you about aggressive faith. And one is you must master the flesh. You must master the flesh. Just write these down if you, if you need to. The second one, and I'm going to go over that one in just a moment. The second one is that you must move in faith. Number one, you must master the flesh. Number two, you must move in faith. And number three is that you manifest, you manifest the presence of God. You move in faith. <laughs> You manifest the presence of God and the will of God. Hallelujah. Is it God's will to heal every person every time? Yes. The answer to that is yes. Because he and, did it at the cross. It's not uh, uh, something, uh, some kind of a decision that's being made today. It was taken care of at the cross. It was, Hallelujah. Healing was purchased at the cross Amen. by Jesus Christ. By his stripes, we were healed. And just like salvation was purchased at the cross, and just like your abundance was and your prosperity was purchased at the cross, healing and deliverance was purchased for you, for me, for those who will trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Those who will believe. It says, those who will believe, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, there are some situations going on in some of your lives right now, and I'm not going to speak them out. I'm just going to say that I declare that those situations that the enemy has tried to bring to you, whether it might be discouragement or, or sickness or disease or uh, marital difficulties or whatever it might be, the Lord is performing 
his work in your life to bring you victory. Aggressive faith will produce victory. Woo! Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I like victory. Hallelujah. I like I like to win. You can ask Brother Fred. Uh, if we're playing a game, I like to win. Hallelujah. If uh if we're playing and I, I know Mary's with us. If you're playing pickleball, uh, then you want to win. Hallelujah. 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 You want to win. So how do we master the flesh? The only way to master the flesh is through the Spirit of God. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And how has he given us that? Through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps you from being afraid. See, if you, you cannot operate in fear and operate in faith at the same time. Just like you cannot speak hateful words and loving words at the same time. It's one or the other. And tonight we're talking about aggressive faith. I love it. We're talking about words that make a difference. Yes. We're talking about not having a spirit of fear because that's not what he's given us, but he has given us a spirit of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about the mind for just a moment. Because that's the only thing that the enemy can get to. The enemy can only get to your soulish realm. You know, he cannot cross the bloodline. So the devil cannot get to your spirit. He cannot take your salvation from you. He cannot take the baptism of the Holy Spirit away from you. But he can get to your soulish realm if... The doors and gates are open. Now, in Romans 8, Romans 8 is, is that whole chapter is, is putting the flesh under. Master the flesh. That's the first M. Sherry, let me just give a quick uh, testimony on this. Uh, uh, years ago, when uh, we first began to learn about spiritual things, and, and I wanted to do what was right. Uh, I wanted to do what I saw in the scriptures to say and I, that they said, and I wanted to do what was right. And so I tried to control my flesh with my flesh, uh, with my natural abilities and natural mind. I found out in a hurry that mm -hmm. backfired and I couldn't do it. It was the same thing that Paul had experienced. He, when he wrote in uh, Romans 7, I want to do the right thing, but when I want to do the right thing, I do the wrong thing. And I don't want to do the wrong thing, but I wind up doing the wrong thing. And that why was that? Because he was trying to do it in his natural abilities. We cannot do, we cannot control, we cannot master our flesh with our flesh. Amen. With God, and with natural uh, tools. Now, there's a lot of uh, improvement kinds of teachings and and uh, in the world mm -hmm. uh, and, and they try to tell you that you can uh, with better, with more strength and uh, reasoning and these steps you can do better, but mm -hmm. you cannot control your flesh with your flesh. You have to let the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit that enables you and empowers you to control and master your flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That good, good Freddie. It says in Romans 8, 4 through 9, that the righteous requirement of the law must be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh do set their minds on fleshly things, the things that are of this earth. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know about you, but... I'm needing to hear all this myself. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal mind is an enemy uh, to God. 
for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. They can't have aggressive faith because their flesh will rise up. What if? What if this? What if that? What about tomorrow? Well, what about uh, the testing that they want me to go through? What about this over here? See, all of that is in the flesh. All of that is in the flesh. But you are not in the flesh. Hallelujah. But in the spirit, if indeed the spirit dwells within you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit, he is not of the Lord. Whew. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. I'm still on the mind because the thoughts, you know, research has shown that an average person has over 2,000 thoughts every single day. Some of them are from you. Some of them are from the Lord. And some of them are from the enemy. If it's to harm you, hurt you, bring evil upon you, or your family, or any part of your life, those are from the enemy. And what does it say to do? It says in, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5, the weapons of our warfare, again, this is aggressive faith, are not carnal, <clears throat> but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is what keeps you bound so that you cannot release your faith. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> Did somebody write that down? Because I don't know that I've ever said that before. A mighty warrior. That's who you are. Tell it again. Tell us that again about the stronghold. I don't know that I can. It keeps you from releasing your faith. Oh, it keeps you from releasing your faith. That's what a stronghold does. It holds you bound so that you cannot release your faith. And right. fear is one of those strongholds. Fear. Doubt and unbelief. And you know, the Bible also talks, and I believe this is Second Corinthians, uh, it says that uh, human reasoning and logic is a stronghold. Oh, is a stronghold. It keeps you from releasing I, your faith. Ooh, oh, that's good. Human that's good. reasoning, logic. That's good, that's good, good, good. And then what are we supposed to do? We're to cast down those arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. Here it is right here, a military term, military language, bring into captivity those evil thoughts. Hallelujah. That's what I had to do. Every time the phone would ring, it would be one of those doctors. Well, this test showed uh, you have the medullary carcinoma, just like we said. And I would have to cast down that thought. Well, how do you cast it down? You cast it down with the word of God, with your sword. You cut off the head of that thought. Oh, hallelujah. How else do you cast it down? You keep the shield of faith up. So that those fiery darts do not go down into your spirit. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you, Hallelujah. Know, you know, one time, Sherry, I was having uh, uh, some issues uh, in my chest and uh, with pain. And, and then I had a family member uh, just in a normal conversation uh, just began to talk about the... Uh, the kinds of problems uh, that would uh, manifest from cancer in the chest. And I mean, I didn't ask for that. And as a family member and told me all these terrible things and, and it was exactly what I was experiencing, but they didn't, the story doesn't end there because mm -hmm. I 
uh, I saw that Jesus, ex he had the people expel the demonic forces. Amen. Expel them. And, and that was in the book of Philippians. I mean, in the translation of Phillips, J.B. Phillips. And he kept using that word expel. And so one day I was uh, uh, just uh, sitting on the bed and Sherry was there beside me and we were talking and, and I said, I'm going to expel this thing. It's been uh, harassing me. It's a excruciating pain in my chest. I'm going to expel it. And I expelled it and I expelled it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And, I expelled Amen. It. and then uh, a demonic, a black demonic bird came out of my chest. Hallelujah. It was a demon. It was, it was a, a demon, demon that was causing that. And, and but those words were put in there. Uh, and I would say as a familiar spirit that, that caused this family member to tell me things that would cause me to think that I had cancer. And, and so I continue to dwell on those things, but I, I put a, I put an emphasis on the word of God. And when I saw in uh, J.B. Phillips translation of the Bible in the book of Mark, and uh, he, he talked about the people expelled uh, the demonic forces. And so I began to expel. I just went, uh -huh. I'm expelling this in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And out it went. Out it went. Hallelujah. It is a visible sign of a black demonic. It looked like a bird. Bird. It was a black bird. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Came right out of my chest. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I know some of you are saying, well, I don't know why she's giving this message to me. Why is she bringing forth this message tonight? Let me tell you something. If I go to be with the Lord tonight, I am so thankful for this message. I am thankful that he has me teaching this message tonight on aggressive faith because you're going to need it. We You're going to need it. We Hallelujah. Need it over and over again. Over and over again. Ourselves. Hallelujah. And people all over the world. First Peter 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten unto us heir to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It's all because of Jesus. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. It's all because we can live in the resurrection power that's that's where we are right now Hallelujah. we're living in his power we're living by his grace hallelujah now so we're going to master the flesh and most of that is in our thought life now we're going to move in faith and there was a little woman in mark chapter five you're familiar with her it's a little woman with the issue of blood, starting in verse 25 through 28. She was not even supposed to be in a group of people. She had been cast out of the camp because of the blood issue. That was one of their rules, one of their traditions, if you will. She wasn't even supposed to come into a group of people. But she aggressively said, but coming. if I touch I'm the hem of his <laughs> garment, she heard about Jesus. And she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made yes, whole. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that's aggression. That's not being shy. That's not being uh, wishy-washy. <laughs> that is being aggressive. <laughs> She, she aggressive didn't, she didn't ask the crowd oh can i get through you and go to get to jesus no she forced her way yes she, she forced did. her way through the crowd oh, hallelujah. and it says in verse 26 that she had spent all that she had and was no better and she had gone <clears throat> uh, she had gone to the doctors and she even grew worse because of all of that but she was aggressive enough to touch his garment. And how do we touch him today? We touch him through faith. We touch him through believing his word. If it's in his word, we can believe it. We can take it to the bank. Hallelujah. 
John 9. This is the blind man. We know these passages. I'm talking about aggressive people. The woman with the issue of blood was aggressive. The man who was blind in, in John chapter 9, Jesus said, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sin. And he went and he washed. Now, if he had not obeyed, if he had said, oh, I'm not going to wash my eyes. <laughs> Just like Naaman in the Old Testament. I'm not going to go dip myself seven times in the Jordan River. The Jordan River is dirty. But what he didn't know was that there was an anointing that Joshua left in the, in the River Jordan. That's why people go over there even today and they're baptized. They want to be baptized in the River Jordan. I would want to be baptized in the River Jordan because there's still an anointing there. Hallelujah. But he went. He obeyed. He was aggressive by doing what God told him to do. What is God telling you to do? Hallelujah. Is he telling you to go to the streets? Then go to the streets. Is he telling you to go to your neighbor? Go to your neighbor. Is he telling you to go to your family? Go to your family. Hallelujah. We've been uh, talking about that tonight and before the meeting and, and about how Jesus was the holy seed in his family. <laughs> Hallelujah. And two of his brothers, his half-brother James and his other brother Jude, both were apostles. Hallelujah. They ended up being apostles Hallelujah. and leaders in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Galatians 5, 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember, we're going to master the flesh and we're going to move in faith. Galatians 5, 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Woo! Hallelujah. Some people, uh, you know, they have the spirit within them, but they're not walking after the spirit. They're walking after the flesh. Or but to be this carnally is, is, minded is death. They're still amen. carnally minded. You amen. can have the spirit, but be carnally minded. That's exactly that's that's, a different process. That's why we have two books, 1 Corinthians and 2 <clears throat> Corinthians. Because the Corinth, the church at Corinth was carnal. They had the gifts, they had uh, all of those things operating, and but yet they were still carnal. Just read Romans 8. Manifest God's will. That's the third M. We're going to master the flesh. We're going to move in faith, and we're going to manifest God's will. What is God's will? Third John 2. That Beloved. All, that all be saved. That all be delivered. That's Amen. Amen. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. That's God's will. The word of God is God's will. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your will being manifested in my life. And if we ask anything according to his will, uh, he oh, hears us hallelujah. We have confidence that he hears us. Amen. I'm talking about 1 John 5. And we know that he hears us and we have the petition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we do anything, we ask him according to his will. And we want to manifest his will. And another one of his is 1 Peter 2 24 that by the stripes of Jesus. We were healed. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not optional. It's not it optional. Was purchased. Your yes. healing was purchased at the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and then in Philippians 4, 6 through 8, it says, Don't be anxious about anything. Don't let anxiety take over. See, anxiety dwells in the in the soul. Just like fear dwells in the soul. That's where it eats. And if you feed it, it will get bigger and bigger. That's right. If you feed anxiety, it will grow. Grow. If you feed fear, it will grow. That's right. 
Okay? Uh, it says we, to be anxious what, what for we, nothing. What are we feeding? Yeah, what are we feeding? That's right. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And then he says, finally, think on these things, things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, whatever things are of good report. So we're not to think about bad reports. We're to think about good reports. Hallelujah. Feed, feed on the good reports. Feed on God's word. Hallelujah. If there is any virtue, if there's any power, if there's any praise, Ooh, hallelujah. think on these things. There is plenty of. Oh, hallelujah. I've only got two more scriptures. Galatians 5, 1. I told you I was going to get to the stand. How do we stand? Galatians 5, 1. Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free. So by believing everything he did on the cross, you stand. You stand. Standing on the rock of ages. Save from, from all the storms, storms that rages. I'm rich, but and not from Satan's wages. Standing on the solid rock. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but we sing ourselves happy. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. And it says, and do not be entangled <clears throat> with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back into bondage. Don't go back into anxiety. Don't go back into worry. Don't go back into fear. Don't go back into to, uh, uh, doubt and unbelief. Stay in faith. I'm talking about aggressive faith. And I'm going to speak that over every one of you when I finish. That you are as bold as a lion and that you have courage and that you are strengthened in order that you may stand All in right. the name of Jesus. All there, right. I've already done it. <clears throat> receive it. Amen. Receive, receive your boldness. Receive, receive your strength. Amen. Receive the courage of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And some of you are going to have to stand in the gap for other people. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's it's uh, one of your friends. Maybe it's uh, a co-worker. When I say stand, we stand with the boldness of the Lord, the courage of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, even in the gap. Even when we're praying for someone else or we're standing by faith for someone else. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know that, that we've talked about this before, but the gift of faith is used mightily by many intercessors who are standing in the gap. For other people. For other people. The gift of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we're not going to be entangled with a with yoke of bondage. Hebrews eleven six, and I'll bring this to a conclusion but without faith it's impossible to please him for he who comes to god listen to this must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him hallelujah so what are we seeking tonight hallelujah. i'm seeking the lord i want the lord yes. i desire the lord I want to praise the Lord. I want him to know that I love him. I want to I want him to know that I'm appreciative of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to seek him because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek 
him. You know, Brother Fred's uh, testimony, it's a powerful testimony where he went away and he fasted and prayed and the Lord healed him. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, and when the doctors told you you had cancer, I said, let's go away. We, we, yeah, we went away. I, said, I told her to go pack your bags. We're going away. Yeah. And uh, uh, seek the Lord. Yeah, we got a, a babysitter to come and <clears throat> take care of our children. And and we went away overnight. And we we fasted and prayed and sought the Lord. And she and, had um, healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 